Welcome, peasants. Hello, and greetings from my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Connor, aka Cryles, and this is my channel for weeby and nerdy shit. I would really appreciate it if everyone please helped me by supporting this community I'm trying to grow by subscribing and liking, as well as sharing and following me on these social media so we can really get this queer nerd shit out there for everybody. So I have decided through my good graces of being a dungeon master for the past five years that I'm going to make a little web series in a way of a tutorial for newcomers to D&D. This will be a little how-to Dungeons and Dragons series that I will make for either newcomers to the game entirely or for people looking for different perspectives when it comes to the way you can play Dungeons and Dragons. Fifth edition. Get out of here Pathfinder, no one likes you. I will be calling it D&D for Dummies. Which may or may not be the name of my D&D group's Facebook Messenger chat, but eh, we're just gonna ignore that, just ignore that. So starting off, I think the best thing is to introduce the most integral part of playing D&D as a newcomer. Making a character. That's right, most newbies do not take the helm and sit in the Dungeon Master's chair. Usually they are the nameless rabble that sit before the might of their in-and-out game god who controls their story, their fun, and their scheduling lives. <laughs> No, but seriously, you will need to make a character. Through this character, you will have grand adventures of glory, gain, and goofiness, as well as some other fun things we will get into, but that's the rest of the video, so just keep on watching. Also, just as a disclaimer, these are just my opinions on how to make a character so that you can get both a great experience and have fun when playing a long-term campaign, so all of y'all min-maxes and optimizes can fight me in the comments. Part 1, Race and Class. Starting off, we gotta go with the basics. You will really only need two things to make your first ever D&D character. A 5th edition character sheet and a 5th edition's player handbook. Which, you didn't hear from me, but if you want something cheap and something for free, just look for a PDF online. It'd be so much easier than paying $50, but again, you didn't hear from me. Sorry, Wizards of the Coast. There are a lot more options through other Wizards of the Coast published books, and of course, depending on how your Dungeon Master likes to run their game, they might let you use online created homebrew classes and races, but for now, we're just gonna stick to the basics, and together, we are going to make a character. Now, in D&D, you have six stats that will affect your character's abilities. I usually let my players roll for their stats, but you can always make it simple by using the number 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, using them to fill in your stats where you see fit. So let's just do that. So a basic rundown of how this works is that you can pick one of the races and classes, and they will change the info that you put into your player's sheet that we talked about earlier. Let's use something easy for a new player. That's just me saying that if you want to go for a class that casts spell and you've never played before, it's going to be a lot. You could do it, you just really have to commit to the way spellcasting works, research how your character and magic works in your campaign, and learn a lot of spells. If you'd like to do that, go ahead. I won't stop you. But anyway, let's do something easy. So let's do a level 3 Barbarian. The reason why I'm doing level 3 instead of 1 is because that's when most classes get their subclass, which is important. Yeah, let's go with that. Level 3 Barbarian, smash shit up, and be an intimidating and raging beast. That sounds fun. And for their subclass, let's go with Berserker. Seems simple enough. Now let's choose a race. What kind of race do we want to have this Berserker be? The Minmaxers would say Orc, but let's go with something fun, because that's what D&D should be. Let's choose, um, yeah, that. A small gnome. A forest gnome, in fact. She's going to be a three foot one raging tank that has Danny DeVito aggro vibes. My gun, oh. I started blasting. Bah, bah. Perfect. All right, so now that you've chosen that stuff, let's fill in the character sheet. Put those numbers from before in, following the class suggestions since it's your first time. Do do do, done. And now just follow and fill in what the book says under Barbarian and Berserker up to level three for class, and do the same for what the book says under Gnomes and Forest Gnomes for race. Boom. Basics done. Part two, backstory. So, now that we've made the bread of this D&D character sandwich, let's get to the meat or the faux meat of this delectable lunch of a character. The backstory, dum dum dum. This is the part that really matters because it is what will define your character, how you play them, and how your DM will interact with them when it comes to the overall story of the campaign. This is also the part where you can fill the rest of your sheet in like alignment, personality traits, bonds, ideals, and flaws. No pressure. Again, if you're making your first character for a throwaway one-shot or module, you don't have to go as intense as I might in a few seconds. To be honest, when I make a quick funny character and I need something fast, I go to this website called whothefuckismydndcharacter.com, which upon each refresh gives you hilarious quick generations of a character for D&D, so check that out if you want some zany and goofy storylines. But for a long-term story campaign, we want this berserker forest known barbarian to have her own story that has made her into the adventure we have come to know her as, right? Right. First, we need a name. Name, what's his name? I got nothing on a name! Come on, baby, what's the name? 
Usually I use the website fantasynamegenerators.com. Even when I'm DMing, I use this for NPCs and locations and a lot of things. It is a great tool. Definitely check that out if you're having trouble naming anything. But let's go with like a Lord of the Rings Hobbit sounding name. How about Maven Smallbill? Yeah. Then let's Google search an image so we can picture this queen or draw it yourself if you have the talent to. Great! So we need to make a story for this girl. Now, my suggestions for character creations are as follows, to both let you have some excitement and pull to the world slash story your DM will insert Maven into, and to allow your DM to obtain the reins to be able to create fun things for your character that will be implemented into the game. So here's the list. One, write your backstory with only the information your character would know. So unless Maven's parents or neighbors told her about the neighborhood dog that was stolen away by an evil tyrant when they were all children, Maven would not know about this. Just write in the third person about what Maven knows and has experienced. This allows for you to really get into her headspace and leave some room for the DM to fill in the blanks with some really interesting story details that will come into fruition throughout the campaign. Number two, make an unobtainable pageant goal for your character. I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as. This is a suggestion I give to every player of mine every time we start a campaign. You want to have something that will always continue to drive your character to continue on in the game slash story so that they don't plateau. For example, goals that cannot really be achieved like protecting the innocent or getting rich or becoming a famous hero. These are goals that there will always be something more to get from and are kind of an endless supply for search and interaction. I've seen time and time again the opposite happen with my own characters and some of my friends' characters in games where I was a player, in which the character's goal is to find their wife and child that were stolen from them, or find the tyrant who killed their town leaving them as the lone survivor and the character's only goal is to kill this evildoer, or something like that. The issue with these goals being your character's defining goal, quote unquote, is that it will back your DM into a corner of only two options. Either they will never touch that goal and your character in-game will feel like their story is never being interacted with, since the DM knows once you reach this goal your character might plateau, or the DM will give you this epic showdown with your rival, or a heartwarming reunion with those lost to you and you will get back what was taken. Therefore, your character's whole defining story arc will now be completed, and give your character now no reason to stick with the party. Of course things change because of context within the campaign story, I'm getting to that, just hold on, keep watching. Why I think it's important to give your character this defining pageant goal, like ending world hunger, is because it will always drive your character forward to strive for this. They can still have lesser goals, like killing the tyrant or saving your lost family, but with this overarching pageant goal, it is easier to get out of a narrow-minded headspace when it comes to those interaction-specific side goals that have to end with a success or a failure. Plus, if your pageant goal is to help those who need it from a true adventurer, it is a goal that will never truly be fully obtained, and would give reason for your character to stick with the party even if they do complete the unfinished business that deals with their backstory. For example, if you kill that tyrant and save your family, but the campaign has dealt with a goddess trying to plunge the world into despair and darkness, your character will want to stick with the party because they still have work to do to help others, including the family that you've searched for and just saved, so that this evil goddess can't do harm to them. So in no way am I saying don't have attachment to your backstory, but don't let those ties to your past be your character's only defining traits. Otherwise, once the past catches up to you, and you deal with that trauma fully, your character might become static and not as fun to play anymore because it will feel as their story has been prematurely completed. Number three. Now here is really where my opinions will come in. Please, for the love of the gods, revel in your character's flaws. Please. No one likes the character who is perfect at everything and has had no trouble in their lives or never has done anything wrong. It is boring and annoying, really. You ain't all that, Barbara. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking to you, optimizing min-maxers. Having a low slash dump stat is okay, and in all honesty, I encourage it. Playing into your flaws makes for some really fun role-playing for not only the others in the party, but for the DM too. And remember, just because you might see them as the referee of the game, the DM is there to play and have fun. So be nice to your DM. Thank you. D&D is not a video game, it's an improv and interaction game that is more fun when things, other than the fantastic and magical, feel real. So, let's quickly make Maven's backstory. I'll have her full backstory in the description if you'd like it. Let's say she was the granddaughter of an old gnomish mage who was the head scholar of this wizard school. She, having lost her parents, notice that I say lost. Maybe Maven thinks they're dead or her grandfather said they did, but Maven doesn't really know, leaving it up to my DM to choose what actually happened to her parents. Anyway, having lost her parents who were adventurers and only having her grandfather was told 
told she would have to study and become the next head scholar when his time came. Maven, however, is not about this. She wants to become an adventurer like how her parents were said to be, despite her grandfather's disapproval. So, with some friends she trained to become strong, which she discovered that she was, quite naturally, assuming that she got these abilities from her parents. The day she is supposed to start her apprenticeship at her grandfather's school and take her entrance trials to be accepted, she decides to run off with her father's great hammer into the world and do as he and her mother did, kick ass and save people. Does her own anger issues with her life and the role she was supposed to follow piss her off and sometimes send her into a rage where people see the short queen is much stronger than they assumed at first glance? Yes. Does she sometimes cause unintentional damage to property or people when she's trying to do the right thing? Yes. But is she trying her best, goddammit? Yes, she will be a great adventurer and hero. Now, that's a quick, easy backstory that can be added to a lot for more flavor and details, but I've also left enough out for my potential DM to make their own ideas for how Maven can fit in the game's story and how they can mess with her. <laughs> this also helps me to fill in the rest of my character sheet, like alignment. Maven is chaotic good. She wants to do good, but her methods are a bit... Eh, unconventional. And maybe she kind of does a Superman in the Man of Steel movie kind of thing where she stops an evildoer but also kind of destroys the whole city. Whoops. This also gives me her background, which I probably would choose as a noble. Now, was she an aristocrat? No. But was she raised by an influential man in whatever town or city she was born? And was she raised to eventually overtake a position of power? Yeah. But she chooses to go against that. So boom boom, your character sheet is even more filled out and basically done. So, simple enough, right? Well, kinda. <laughs> but I hope you get the idea. Creating characters is one of my favorite parts about D&D. I love making crazy, zany, or very serious, traumatic characters, and it's fun being able to play them or think of these worlds or these stories that make these characters come to life in a way. So I thought that this video would be a perfect start to this little web series of how to play Dungeons and Dragons or D&D for dummies. Um, if you want at all to use Maven in any of your campaigns, I'm going to put not only her picture that I drew, her backstory, and her player sheet all in the description, so if you'd like to go get that, it's right there for you. Let me know what D&D topics you would like to hear continued on from this one. It was definitely a lot of work to get all the drawn stuff in and all of that, but I had a lot of fun and I think this is a really fun idea and I would love to make more, so yeah. But other than that, please subscribe and like um, and have a great one, you guys. See ya.